Focus matters, and if your focus isn't right, then don't be surprised if you don't get the results that you're not focusing on. Let me explain. Driven mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. For everyone out there who's been listening to this podcast for a while, I'm absolutely pumped. We just cracked another milestone for listeners. We just keep getting more and more listeners, so thank you to all those who have been subscribing, liking, sharing for all of you who are jumping across to our YouTube channel as well to watch these in a video format. Also for checking out some of the trainings and some of the stuff that I'm dropping across on YouTube as well. I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much for each and every one of you. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the amazing community of driven mofos that we have. So thank you to each and every one of you, especially those of you who have been sharing it, who have rated the podcast, reviewed the podcast, told their friends and family about it. You all rock. Anyway, let's talk about why a lot of people don't get the results that they want. And this is going to hurt a little bit. It's so obvious though. And it's because most people don't focus on getting the results that they want. They focus on what they don't want instead of what they do want. And let me explain. So when someone says, I'm fat, I'm sick of being fat, I'm sick of being unhealthy, I'm sick of having cash flow problems, I'm sick of struggling all the time, I'm sick of you know, not being where I want to be in life, I feel like I'm wasting time all the time. And they focus on all these negatives. They think that the negative is going to help them to achieve the things that they want. And they normally do it as a fear response or as a stress response because the more they can get stressed out, the more decisive that they're going to be and eventually they'll make a decision that will hopefully help them to move forward. But the truth is that if you spend the majority of your energy on problems in life, you're not focusing the majority of your energy on the solutions to those problems. If you're focused on what's not working, you're not really focusing on what is working and how to make things work. So be very, very careful and fine tune your focus. Your focus matters. Now, I'm not saying don't focus on problems because if there's a problem, you need to identify the problem. You need to get really, really clear with what it is and be very specific. You need to ask the right questions, and then from there, you can start to problem solve. But then you focus on implementing the solution, not the fucking problem. Most people spend their life focusing on the problem, and even if they know the solution, they will keep talking about the problem over and over and over again, which then means that their focus is the problem, and so they'll create more problems. This is not a good strategy for life. This is not a good strategy for business. Focus matters. Be intentional each and every day with your focus, and know what you're focusing on. Self-awareness is important. Because the more aware you are, the more you can stop yourself when you are focusing on the wrong things. And then from there, you can retrain your focus and get into action and get into gear. If you want to be calm, then focus on being calm. Don't focus on the stress and the anxiety. A lot of people, when they're anxious, they'll say things like, why am I so anxious? I feel anxious all the time. I don't know why I'm so anxious. And so their mindset is focusing on the anxiety. It's not focusing on being calm. If they just change that language pattern to how can I be more calm? How can I relax more? How can I just chew a little bit? Then that's going to give you a different feeling. And the more you reinforce that feeling, eventually that will become your identity and part of your behavior. It might take a while, but you'll get there. There are some other crazy tools that I can teach you at Thrive Time or one of our other events to help with that. But most people are focusing on the thing that they don't want. Most people focus on their financial problems and go, you know, why am I always broke? Why am I always struggling? Well, you're focusing on the wrong thing. If you've got financial problems, focus on sales, focus on becoming more valuable, focus on changing your mindset, focus on creating better financial habits. But most people are focusing on the wrong thing and then wondering why the wrong things keep happening to them. It's pretty self-explanatory. So this week, Driven Mofos, I have a challenge for you. My challenge is, can you focus or spend more time focusing on the things that you want and focusing on making the decisions that you need to make in order to achieve the things that you want? Are you able to focus on the way you want to feel more than the way that you don't want to feel and your problems and your stresses and your fears and all your worries and all your concerns? Are you focusing more on the world that you want to see or are you focusing more on the world that you don't want to see? by the financial crisis and the stress and the pressure and, you know, the chaos and all the judgment and all that stuff on social media. You need to focus and train yourself to focus on the things you want in life and watch what happens. Your life will change and it will change dramatically. And then other people think that you're a weirdo because you focus on the things that matter in life, which then means that normally you'll have the results that they want, but they'll consider you a weirdo because they'll say things like, yeah, but how can you not see all of this chaos and all this shit that's happening in the world? And how can you not see that all of these problems are there? It's not that you don't acknowledge them. You can acknowledge them, but then stay focused on what you need to focus on, okay? It's not that hard. But just most people train themselves that if there is a problem, they tend to focus on the problem or they tend to focus on the worry or the concern or the stress or the emotion that they don't want or the things that they don't have, which then makes them more insecure, makes them more afraid, more stressed out, more worried, more concerned. And the more that they do that, the less likely they are to achieve the things that they want because the less likely they are to make the decisions they need to make to get the results that they want. So anyway, Driven Mofos, my challenge is, This week, 
for the next seven days, can you focus on more of the stuff that you want? Focus more on the decisions that you need to make, not that you're afraid to make. Focus more on the way you want to feel. And focus more on doing the things that allow you to enjoy the life that you've got. So if you wake up in the morning, the alarm goes off and you go, I got to go to work. Stop yourself and say, do I have to go to work or am I choosing to go to work? And watch what happens. Your emotions will shift. Then when you do that, you go, you know what? I get to go to work. This is a great thing. There are people around the world who don't get to go to work, who don't have jobs. I'm fortunate enough to have a job. Therefore, I'm grateful that I have a job. Then you get in the car and you drive to work and you go, I'm grateful that I get to drive to work and I'm grateful that I get to do this. Once you start living life like that, it becomes a completely different game. Then I have to, I'm struggling, this is bullshit. Why don't I have what I want? Because the focus is incorrect. Now, I'm not saying become one of those false gratitude wankers that, you know, I'm so grateful for everything, but their life is a piece of shit. Don't fake it. What I'm saying is just learn how to train your brain to see it for what it is. Now, if you can convince yourself that there's always problems and always stresses and always fears, you can convince yourself the opposite of that as well. I had a client a couple of weeks ago who is a very highly successful business person. They work in the finance industry and they said to me, but Michael, what you're telling me feels like I'm lying to myself. And I said, you're lying to yourself all the time because if you see the world is stressful or that there's no money in the world or you're seeing all these problems, then you're lying to yourself anyway because the truth is that there's both. And if you can't see both sides, then you're lying to yourself that only one side exists. If you have ever said to yourself, I don't like this person because of all these reasons, and you're only seeing those reasons, you're not acknowledging the other side of that person. So you're not acknowledging where they're kind, when they're kind, how they look after others. You're only seeing things that you want to see because it gives you a justification or a reason to dislike them. Now, if that is you, you're lying to yourself. Now, just in studies in psychology, 50% of every story that you tell yourself is a lie. Now, no one really knows what is true and what is not true in their own head. Because the way that our perceptions work is that they distort what is really there and it creates something called a reality. Our reality isn't what's really there. It's what we perceive is there. So it's a perception. Our whole life is a perception. And it's filtered through our value system and also through our beliefs and our stories and the meanings that we attach to those things. When someone says, this hurts me because you said this, to another person, that may not hurt them. So does that mean that that's a bad thing or does that mean that it's a good thing or does that mean that it's not even worth worrying about? It all depends on the individual because it's their perception and their brain filters their whole reality and it depends on their past experiences. But what tends to happen is that we then create these things called a neuro association and we associate things back to our past experiences and we remember what we want to remember. Now, those studies in psychology, and I should bring them up somewhere, I'll be able to find them. But if you Google studies on psychology, 50% truth, you'll probably see them come up. But the majority of our stories that we make, or at least 50% of them, are made up. When someone tells you a story, it's half truth and half a lie. Now, it's not that they're trying to lie, it's just that that's the way that the brain works. It fills in information, and that information is inaccurate. I shouldn't use the word lie. There's part of their story that's accurate, and there's part of their story that's inaccurate. The question then becomes what part of it is accurate and what part is inaccurate, and that's the hard part. So you've just gotta be very careful with the stories you tell yourself, because you are lying to yourself. And so if you're like my client the other day, I explained that to him and I said, well, if you're lying to yourself about you know, focusing on all these problems, why don't you lie to yourself to focus on all the things that are working and what's going well? Because either way you're lying, but one of them is gonna produce a completely different result than the other one. So why don't you focus on the results that you're getting or not getting and then change it? And he said, okay, that makes sense. So I hope that that helps River Mofos. What you focus on matters. It is important. I think that it is really important to focus on the things that you want in life and to keep tuning your brain to do so. And it will probably change your life. It might not happen overnight, but it will happen over time. Because based on Heb's law or Heb in theory, circuits in the brain that fire together, wire together. And when we train ourselves to focus on certain things, we will keep focusing on those things. So if you don't like the things that you're focusing on and the way that your brain's working, then just change it. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. Even if someone else tells you that it is, it's hard. It doesn't have to be. It's we make it hard because... That's sometimes how humans operate, some humans anyway. Hope that that helps River Mofos. Have a great day. Remember to focus on what you want. Keep crushing it. And if you're loving this stuff, remember to jump across to our No BS Business Hacks group on Facebook. It's called the No BS Business Hacks for Driven Mofos. I am dumping information, tools, templates, trainings, all of that sort of stuff in there daily because I want our community to be some of the most successful people on the planet. And so I don't care where you're starting from. I don't even care if it's rock bottom. Providing you're looking forward and you want to be a driven mofo and achieve great things in life, then we're giving you the tools and templates to be able to do that. I want to make sure that we are one of the most driven groups of mofos on this planet. Hence why our community called the Driven Mofos. 
Anyway, Driven Mofos, jump across that Facebook group. I look forward to seeing you in there. Have a great day. Keep crushing it. And remember, tune your focus in to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Have a great day. Bye.